Hey everyone, Cody here, and for this video, I'm going to give out my thoughts on seeing the same movie more than once in theaters. I'm going to give out some history on the subject, my lifelong desire to not do such a thing and why, and what made me change my mind this year as I broke one of my own rules twice and saw two movies more than once. Now before I continue, yes, I am doing voiceover for this video. I know it sounds kind of lazy when I should have recorded myself while talking like usual, but the thing is that it's just really hard to do so while remembering what exactly to say, and I pretty much just wanted to get this over with because this video is way over too. Maybe if I had my own teleprompter, this might have worked, I don't know. We'll start off with why I didn't like the idea of seeing the same movie more than once. Sometime during my childhood, I had been hearing about people seeing a movie more than once in a theater, and I didn't like that because you already know what was going to happen in the movie, and it'd spend more money when you could be saving it for upcoming movies you would want to see. I believe that was 2003 when I learned about from a Finding Nemo commercial where you can <clears throat> see it again, and later when a family friend said she saw Freaky Friday twice. I never wanted to do anything like that. Unfortunately, my parents and this family we used to hang out with love the drive-in and forced me to see Herbie fully loaded and the pacifier on what was like two days after the pacifier came out on DVD. And when it was in theaters months prior, one of my grandmothers took me and my brother to see it already. I wanted to see Herbie back then, but still had a huge meltdown because I didn't want to see the pacifier again because I already saw it in theaters and even more more crazy to me was that I saw it on DVD on the last day of school where me and my classmates watched it. But then one day later came the surprise announcement from my parents that we would be going to the drive-in to see both Herbie and Pacifier. I sucked it up and went through with it anyway because I was a kid anyway. Regardless, both movies don't hold up for me, so you won't see me reviewing them anytime soon because they're like some of those movies you liked as a kid, but now they're just total crap. Many years later, as I started to see movies with one of my aunts, and I've already seen a movie she wanted to see, she'd be like, would you mind seeing it again with me? And I'd be like, no thank you. And my logic of not seeing the same movie more than once increased when me and said aunt were next to a mother and her little daughter trying to find a movie they could see, and the daughter suggested Ice Age Collision Course. The mom responded, you already seen Ice Age. I'm not paying for a ticket to a movie you've already seen. And I thought she was right. You know what happens, and it's spending more money. I kept rebuffing my aunt and some of my friends on the idea and stuck by it. But in 2018, when I was trying to see Incredibles 2 Immortal Engines, the feeders I were in were screwing up when the movie started to the point me and fellow moviegoers rewatched these movies from the beginning. When I saw Incredibles 2, it was in 4DX 3D. After watching the trailers, that awesome intro from the cast and crew, and the tear-jerking Pixar Shore bow, the movie kept getting fuzzy and going blank while we were listening to the action, and everyone, me included, were getting incredibly frustrated until they stopped the movie after 11 and a half minutes. So they restarted the movie all the way back to the intro and short film until we eventually rewatched the first 11 and a half minutes. For Mortal Engines, I pretty much saw the first few minutes like three times because I was seeing an IMAX 3D, but it kept showing it in 2D until the IMAX fear fixed the problem and almost made me miss my bus after the movie. Ironically, despite all that, I keep forgetting about a situation that happened all the way back in 2010 when me and some of my relatives were seeing Clash of the Titans in 3D, where at one point in the movie, the left side of the screen went yellow and the movie shut off for a bit until the problem was fixed, and when it was, the film was rewinded a bit, so we saw the same scene more than once in theaters. So now you guys are probably asking, what made me see movies more than once in theaters after all? Well, back in May, me and a friend were seeing Aladdin. I wanted to see the movie in IMAX 3D, but my friend wanted me to see the movie with her, so we decided to go see it in Ultra Avax 3D at a theater closer to us and her job. The floors were slippery, people were walking in front of us with a flashlight, the lights went on when the credits started rolling, and while we were waiting for everybody else in the packed theater to leave, we were like, this movie didn't feel much like 3D. Apparently, that's because when we left our seats and went down the stairs, we got so Cineplex courtesy tickets from people working at the theater because we didn't see the movie in 3D this whole time and we all had our 3D glasses on. 
I was pretty stumped for a while because I was trying to think whether or not I should just see the movie again and see it in IMAX 3D this time, but I already knew what happened in the story and I'd be spending money again. Eventually I thought I should just try it while it's still in IMAX, so while I did see it in 3D, the one thing this viewing of a movie lacked was a response from the moviegoers I was sitting with from my previous viewing, so seeing it a second time had its pros and cons for sure. The second movie I saw in theaters twice this year was a movie I barely heard anything about until the trailer premiered in late August. It was Motherless Brooklyn. Since I first saw that trailer, I felt interested and hooked into what this movie is. I just liked the 1950s neo-noir look of New York, the smooth jazz in the background, and the A-list cast, plus it was written, produced, and directed by Edward Norton. So he didn't just star in the movie in case you haven't realized yet. I got a chance to see it at this year's Toronto International Film Festival at the Princess of Wales Theatre, but there were some cons to this. First off, the screen was surprisingly small for such a fancy theatre hosting a film festival. Also, because it's a mystery crime flick, there are some things you don't get with just one viewing of it, like what happened to some of these characters, and you easily forget the quotes. Of course, there was also the surprise Q&A that blocked the music from the end credits. I would have just said I liked the movie, but there were also some things I felt were missing, and it made me think that yes, I did see the movie two months in advance before most people, but maybe I should see it again when it comes out wide release on November 1st to better understand what's going on. I mean, the theater I went to to see the movie again had a bigger screen, and I redeemed C points from my ticket to save money. Not only did I hear what the end credits were like, but I better understood the story, what happened to certain characters, and I still remember some of the quotes, especially the ones that made me laugh. The only cons to seeing the movie again in that theater were the fact that no one was clapping when the movie ended like at TIFF, and I was the youngest person in the theater. I'm 25 years old, and I was literally the youngest person seeing the movie. Most of the people there were either middle-aged or seniors. Sure, that does happen to me once in a while, like when I see movies like Black Mass or Allied. It just sort of makes me feel old. Still, seeing it again had its perks, because after I saw it at TIFF, I thought I liked the movie, but now I love the movie, and it's all because I saw it again on a bigger screen, and I kind of felt rewarded. Those two moments suggest that maybe I should have seen other certain movies in the past more than once in theaters because of some of the rough experiences, but I won't get into those. All I could say is that I opened my mind more. So that's pretty much what I have to say on all this. I just thought I'd make this video so I don't bring up full details on these experiences when I review these movies in my top 20 best movies of 2019 video. Just make a separate video out of it and briefly mention the fact that I saw both movies twice in theaters. That's all. Hope you guys like this video, leave your thoughts in the comments section if you want, and here is the link to my TIFF 2019 video in case you want to hear more details of my experiences from this year's festival. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in another video.